To movie reviews. In this review, I'm talking about Guest House Paradiso from 1999. Um, this is a really completely different film altogether. This is um, obviously we have the previous uh, film reviews that I've done on this with this series. Um, you've got classics, you've got complete, um, you've got some main really good classics, and then you've got the really obscure films that people, well, uh, that people think like, what the hell's with this film? And then you've got some underrated gems as well. Um, that people tend, some people recognise, some people don't. But with this, um, now we're going to talk about this film. Um, it's sort of, I don't know, it's sort of an underrated gem this is, but though it has an interesting type of feel to it, like it's quite all over the place. Anyway, what is Guest House Paradiso? This is basically a sort of spin-off film to the TV sitcom Bottom. Now, for people who don't know what Bottom was, it used to be a 90s sitcom between 1991 and 1995. It ran for three, season, three series out of, for about 18 episodes and a couple of stage plays. And obviously, if you if you know on Judge Michael Pictures, it stars Rick Mail and Adrian Emerson, uh, two brilliant alternative comic, um, comic actors or comedians, very much, uh, doing... Well, they were in their prime in the 80s and 90s, they were. Uh, started off with the comic strip they did, the comic strip presents, then moved to the young ones, Filthy Rich and Catflap, then to the New Statesman, then to Bottom. Um, very prolific they were uh, there at the time, and obviously Sally Rickmill, Sally passed away in June of 2014, about three years ago. Well, nearly about three years ago he passed away, and obviously there was a sad moment and made big headline news. So, in sole respect for him, I am going to do Guest House Paradiso. Um, so I guess that's parody, so it's basically sort of the same characters, you know, with Richard and Eddie, Richard Richard and Eddie Hitler, and they're basically running the hotel. Sort of a Faulty Towers type of inspired, inspirational type um, film, very much, and yeah. So the idea of this film came about when they did the tour for, in 1997, they did the Hooligan I Hooligans Island tour, and if you've seen Bottom Live, it's absolutely raunchy and rude and completely insane but good it's hilarious it's really funny though they tend to swear a lot it's hence where they're rating 18 for but if you if you still want to watch live shows give them a watch they're fantastic you can watch them on youtube actually but really good and give a chance to watch the series it is absolutely brilliant hilarious very funny you get a lot of laughs so i guess that's probably so um uh, the acting acting wise between with male and edgerton is always brilliant though with these performances in the film, with the film, because they're usually all over the place, extreme. It's like the, they're like kids on high sugar. They are, and obviously tend to swear a lot and do a lot of rude, raunchy, raunchy sort of jokes. They are, but here they seem to slow, scale down a little bit. Though prior to the prior, prior for the film, the make of the film, Rimmel had his accident in 1998 with, with a quad bike incident and was in a coma for a couple of days. So that sort of helps him a little bit because it's all like it's sort of rebuilding him a little bit and sort of recuperating I think or sort of a slight recovery I think. But his but his type of energy sort of scale back a little bit in this film. Though he still gives a decent a good performance and still still Richie is he's still the character of Richie. And with Eddie, with Adrian's character, it's sort of gone well, it's sort of like Scale is like in the background here. It's sort of like Richie's sort of um, henchman, very much like he's he doesn't really do much sometimes. Like he's sort of like he, he has a little few jokes in there. He's though he doesn't has much lines. He sort of he sort of uses like a bit of like a like a sound comic he is, like a sound comedian, very much or sound actor. And yeah, but. I don't know, his, his, his performance in, in this film is quite questionable, but with Adrian, I think it is... I think it's alright, he is. It's sort of, it just scaled back a little bit. Um, the other cast members on here, we've got Steve O'Donnell, who plays a chef, who briefly appeared in. He played Spud Gun in the TV show. He played Eddie's best friend, Spud Gun. And also, 
Interesting note, uh, Christopher Ryan, who played um, Mike in The Young Ones, actually played Freddie's other friend, Dave Hedgehog. Quite a different name, but he was like Scruffy Idiots. He's one of Spoken's friends along with Eddie. And well, she, well, shame, very much a shame he didn't appear in this film, which is quite surprising, because he he appeared in most episodes with Steve O'Donnell in Bottom, but never appeared in this film, maybe because of work commitments and other stuff. Yeah. The other cast members are actually quite interesting because there's a few familiar faces, of course. You've got Bill Nighy appearing in this film. The Bill Nighy. Uh, Fame for Shaun of the Dead, LB's in Pet. Um, was it like. Was it a small. No, it's not, no, it's not that. It's. A new, and then that new film is coming out. I can't remember its name now. Paul, he appears in that. Yeah, and he appeared in Dad's Army as well, yeah. Who. Plays, was it Mr. Johnson he plays? He plays. He, plays, uh, he comes in. Uh, Brief at the beginning, I think. I'm trying to recount this film. Um, it's like switching back and forth. It's like switching back and forth for just scenes like, where do I, where is it now? Which is scene goes. Yeah, he, he comes in the beginning, it does, and I can't remember the actress name. Though in, in, it's quite though it's quite interesting, and his performance is like he's, it's like what Bill Nye does, like he's sort of strict, like scary bit scary looking, and you know, he might punch it, though he does have sure a fist into the, ca into the camera lens, he does, which is alright, which is quite good. Uh, one of the main stars also that actually stays longer and has a good in interesting little impact on this film is Simon Pegg. Yes, he actually appears in this film, and because it's 1999, this is before this is actually his first um, film debut. This is before he did Space and the uh, the Free Flavor Coletta trilogy and all that sort of, and all and all Star Trek and stuff. Um, he's quite young in this one. He's about in his twenty. I think he's twenties. He is at this point. He plays. A uh, young father of a small family of like a family of two kids, and they are looking for a place to live that's more ch has cheap accommodation. They end up going to guest house parody, so which is next to a power plant, a nuclear power plant next on the Isle of Wight, next to a cliff, and that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, and obviously, he discovers um, that Richard, that Richard and Eddie have been fi uh, videotaping uh, the women actually undressing stuff because. For anyone who doesn't, for everyone who never knew the sh doesn't know the show or what the characters are like, they're sort of like sexually pervert. They're like well, they're a bit perverted. Yeah, they they're like perverts. They are, and and obviously you know mm, Richie's always in fact in always in in fact with the the ana the female anatomy he is. Same with Eddie, though. Richie's more extremely perverted. Really, he is like he's he's self silent. He's very. Uncontrollable and sort of like you know that sort of thing. Like it's it's like a I don't know. Basically, I can't really describe his sort of like his um, sort of um, interaction with women. But it's quite unsettling, a bit cringeworthy as well. Whereas with Eddie, he's sort of funny. He's drunk and hilarious. You know, you know, well, and saying old bird and stuff like that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Um. So obviously, Simon Pegg's character, you play, what's his name, Mr. Nice. Probably, yeah, the Nice family, that's what they are. And obviously, Mr. Nice finds out that they, he has a videotape of the, of the CCT cameras, which is basically taking a picture, which is basically their film, obviously they're filming the, the film, the film, what was it, the, yeah, the female guests, obviously undressing and stuff and showering and stuff. And he decides, you know, to skip the VHS and obviously report it to the police in the morning. And the funny scene, of course, when they sleep in, Richard and Eddie go through the shafts, like through the there's little tunnels in the guest house that they've got, and obviously trying to get the VHS was it's like a bit of a difficult problem because the end, it, was it Richie ends up going like nearly going through um was it some of the floor some of the wood breaks and he ends up and has like a candle in his eye then another candle in his eye yeah then another candle in his eye thanks to Eddie which he, which is actually quite funny actually. Though it's interesting because it's actually a, pros a prosthetic eye that they molded from Rick's face and put it on, and it actually does feel like he's like a is shoving a candle into Rick's eye, which is in which is hilarious actually. Though I think people in the cinema might have looked like, <laughs> or when they first watched it, like, oh god, um, yeah. And obviously, when they're trying to get the, the VHS, they use a fishing rod. They do. Well, I think 
you know, Richie uses the fishing rod, and instead of getting the fish, as he gets um, Mr. Nice's old Simon Pegg's uh, nipple ring, he has a he has a nipple piercing. He does, and obviously, it's quite olive, uh, quite uh, we. It's well, it's quite disgusting and funny at the same time. There's no gore in this at all, and and don't, no, they don't rip it off. No. Though they pull it and it and it's all stretched, it's like he's got the world stretches nipple, and he's still asleep. You kind of feel no pain. And um, obviously, retrieve that. I think they do succeed or not, or no. He ends up going to the ceiling and bang his head on the roof, and then goes back into bed. For, um, uh, there's an Italian actress that comes to the hotel, escaping from a French boyfriend, who's quite a bit of a violent psychopath. And obviously, another thing is to mention is that next to the nuclear power plant, there was unloading fish. And then, excuse me about that, some of the dogs are barking too much, I can't really, it's, it's really hard distracting, but once, well, next to the nuclear power plant, they, well, they know Eddie very well, these staff, and these sort of people that they tend to come and see and have a drink with him, and they, and they have, well, they accidentally left some fish beside the hotel. What they didn't realise was, it was red, it was like red active, it was like extremely poisonous, and once they've eat, and once they've eaten the fish, they vomit all this green stuff, which is quite hilarious. Like it's pro projectile vomit, a bit like in between us actually, like what they used to do, but more commonly green. If you know what I mean, like it's like it's sort of all over the place. And obviously, the actress—I can't remember the name of the act the actress who plays the Italian actress Gina Cavadaro. That's a, that's the name of the character, but the actress's name I can't remember the name. Though she appeared in a few Red Hot Tablets afterwards. And then you have like was it Vincent Castle? He was the violent lover, the violent, uh, rejected husband. Um, obviously he, and obviously he eats the fish and all this prosaic stuff like he's, like when he vomits, he holds his mouth and obviously he creates like this big ball and it's sort of like a parody of Razor Lost Stock and so, and this sort of stuff. It's, it's completely mad. You know, the final act of this film is completely all over the top. It's a bit over the top it is. Like it's sort of like... People vomiting green vomit, and obviously there's this is big ball of vom uh, vomit chasing down down the corridors of the hotel of the um, of the ho well, hotel. And all stuff happens, but it's it's hilarious. It is, and actually, in, and in the end, at the end of the movie, they do uh, Eddie and, was it Gina, Eddie and Richie do jump to the cabin, which they which was the main goal of the. All the main goals in the series actually just to go off and get some birds on a tropical island somewhere. And they do in the end actually, and they end up running a bar. And quite good actually. Uh, quite interesting little payoff it was, though you never you never seen it and yeah. One thing to mention, Adrian Emerson did direct this film. He directed a few stuff in the comics to presents and a live show for French and Saunders. I guess that's probably so. Um it's a bit of a bonkers film. It's a bit over the place, it is. It's not Weird, as I say, wrote a werewolf on a naked lunch. But it's got a bit of weirdness in it, and it's comically over the place. It's got a bit of childlike humour to it as well, and it's nicely shot, and it's got a bit of suspense to it a little bit as well. It's got a bit of a jazz feel to it as well, which is done by, done by Colin Towns, and the main highlights, of course, which has been Rick Mill and Edgerton Emerson, who are fantastically brilliant, as always. They are comic geniuses. Nothing wrong with that, you know, they are, they are a brilliant partnership that lasted for a long time. They have since, the, back in the days of college, since Comic Street Presents, Young Ones, so on, all the way to the very end. And their legacy still lives on. So anyway, I guess it's probably so. Give it a watch if you can, try and find the DVD of it, or watch it on stream, streaming websites and stuff, you know. You might give, give, give it a chance, you know. People tend to, some, well... Emerson thinks it's not a bottom movie. Technically, technically it is a bottom movie because it's it's the dressing really, they've got the characters there and they've got the sort of jazzy feel going on with the, with the soundtrack, though the special effects don't hold up very good. Though it's done for about was it two million pound two million pounds they made this film, though it's not a blockbuster anyway, so the effects don't really hold up as well. Though it's still a funny film. And I think I do recommend it. I do tend to watch it now and again a little bit. And I hey, if you get a good couple of laughs out of it. Anyway, that's my review of Guess That's Paradiso, and I'll see you for the next review. See ya!